Hello everyone. Today's live is on soul contracts with our animal companions. I know some of you have been asking about them and I want to give you some information on them so you have a better idea of what they're all about. So basically, um, our soul agreements, soul contracts, some people call them sacred contracts. Um, and basically what soul contracts or soul agreements are is prior to coming in to this lifetime, um, prior to us incarnating in this lifetime, we make a, uh, we make a um, what am I trying to say? We make an agreement with another soul agreement, basically, with another for us to get together here in this plane. Okay, these um, we soul contracts, soul agreements are about um, lessons. They're about um, like learning lessons. Um, they're about relationships. They're about, you know, they can be human to human. They can be human to animal. Um, they're really sacred relationships that we make a contract with another soul to, to um, take part in once we're here um, on this plane. They're really about um, our spiritual growth, our soul's evolution, um, you know, for both, for both us and the other being. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to be focusing on our animal companions. So some soul contracts or soul agreements can be, um, you know, negative, some can be positive. Generally speaking, the soul contracts that we have with our animal companions are of a positive nature. So that's something I want to um, mention right there. Um, again, they're for spiritual growth, soul's evolution, um, they help us. They 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 really help us. And many times we have like ride. We kind of ride the wave of soul contracts over and over. I mean, of of incarnations together over and over again. So it's important for us to know that. If you guys have any questions about soul contracts or soul agreements, please um, shoot them in the comments, and I'll try to get them answered for you. So these are sacred relationships that we make with another being prior to coming in. Um, they're, you know, the, the, they help us to be more whole in some cases. Not that another being completes us, but sometimes there's a peace within our soul, especially when it's a loved animal companion, that we often, um, we often feel a lot better when they're with us. Thanks for all the hearts, you guys. Love, love you has sending them for me. Um, so, so sometimes they're to, to, to bring a bit more wholeness about for us. And for any of you who have had a beloved animal companion, I'm sure you can um, relate to that. Um, so please type your, any comments you have about um, uh, specifically about soul agreements or soul contracts. And uh, let me know because I'll answer them for you in this video if I have time. So they're about, they help, but they're about self-actualization. They can be about healing. They can be about expansion of our soul, expansion of our learning. They're, they're, um, they're ways that we are, for the most part, the ones with our animal companions, that we are more fulfilled in this life. You know, they can be about healing. They can be about learning. So sometimes uh, two beings come together for some healing you know, for one or the other or both. That's um, really important. And it's, how many of you guys feel like you've been with animals before and you've had contracts with your animal companions who have, you know, who, who are with you or have been with you and have since crossed? So the key piece about soul contracts or sacred contracts or soul agreements with our animal companions, it's all about love. Love is a huge piece of this. Um, we, you know, it's the key. There's, um, there's this love that we share with certain uh, beings, um, animal beings, that just makes life so much better. And I know you wouldn't even be here watching this if that wasn't the case for you. So, um, and you know, how we, how we find these beings at the beginning is like a vibrational um, frequency, kind of like a magnetic attraction to this, you know, dog, cat, horse, parrot, tortoise, um, you know, um, what else could you have? You could have a ferret, anything, any being, any living being. It could be a goat, a cow, uh, you know, whatever. So we have this vibrational or magnetic draw to this being. 
And then once we've spent a lifetime with them, because for the most part, maybe not in the case of tortoises or parrots, but for the most part, our animal companions' lifespans are so much shorter than ours. Once they've crossed over, we can still be completely connected with them, number one. And number two, we can absolutely have, um, ha you know, speak to them, arrange for them to come back, wait for them to come back, understand that they're coming back. And one of the things, so the, so the way they come back is through re reincarnation. And the whole concept of soul agreements and soul contracts or sacred contracts, whatever you'd like to call them, they are based on the belief in reincarnation. You know, if you don't believe in reincarnation, I'm not really sure how sacred contracts would apply or soul contracts would apply um, for you. Um, but, you know, I'm not opposed to that being being. Uh, happening so so basically what happens is how I want to explain a little bit about this for you because what I find is so many people and by the way if you have any questions at all about soul contracts soul agreements sacred contracts please put them in the comments I will have time to answer a couple of your questions so I'd like to see what you've got for me and uh, I'll be happy to um, answer them so basically what happens is when we have um, met with another soul, had a, an incarnation together, a lifetime together, um, whatever that means, you know, the lifetime could be short for us or short for them. Um, then what happens is we actually can decide prior to us even being in this lifetime to reconvene again. So when you have a really, really strong bond with another, it usually is because they're fulfilling a soul contract that was made long before you came to this plane. And many of them have repetitions over and over again, which is so wonderful. So basically, um, what how they come back to us, this is something that people ask me a lot. So um, animals can come back to us via a newborn puppy, kitten, horse, bull, you know, whatever. They can come back to us in like a, a, a young to adolescent. They can even come back sometimes in an older soul. So, um, and how that works is that works by soul agreement between those two souls. Sometimes a soul will step aside to allow another soul to come in so that they can then be with you. And, um, I, again, per the soul agreement, sacred contract, because they have one together to allow for that to happen. Um, another time is like if, if your animal companion was coming in in a new litter of kittens or puppies or whatever you want to call it, then what can happen there is that um, the um, puppy. So, so I used to think that the soul entered the puppy or the kitten or the foal at the time of conception or soon thereafter. And what they have shown me through my thousands and thousands of readings over the years is that that isn't exactly the way it goes. If there's a litter here, let's say this is a litter or a foal being born, then there's like souls kind of hovering around, souls with souls that have a really good possibility of reincarnating through that be being that's, that's you know been conceived. And so then there's the time through the um, you know gestation period, and then there's the birth, and still it's not really locked in. So let's say you're planning to get a puppy, and um, you found a litter. You feel like that's where your puppy's coming, your 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 reincarnated soul that you had a soul agreement with is coming through. Then if they um, if you don't get them, that soul hasn't locked into that puppy. It's kind of like Whatever soul is for you won't go past you. The, the spirit realm has amazing ways of being able to orchestrate things so much more differently than we would think about it here on the physical plane. So, um, so let's say, you know, there was four puppies and you were planning to get puppy number four and puppy number four didn't make it. That doesn't mean that you've lost your opportunity to connect with that you know, soul that was coming back by soul agreement for another time with you. It just means that things have shifted and it may be that one of the other three puppies will trans, you know, will, uh, will allow that soul to come through if that's a possibility for you. If they've all been paid for and spoken for, that may not happen. And then it'll, it'll move to the next opportunity come through. So it's kind of like 
it's kind of like when water runs down a mountain, it takes the path of least resistance. We're quite familiar with that, having monsoons here in Arizona and northern Arizona when the, where there's lots of mountains. Water just kind of take, follows the path of least resistance. Well, when a soul is coming back to you to fulfill your soul agreement or your soul contract, it's taking the path of least resistance. So if there's like a litter, a dog, a breeder, whatever, or a rescue situation that you're really focused on, that being will kind of hover around there to see if that works out. If that isn't working out, then it'll find the next path of least resistance. That all works together. So do any of you guys have any questions um, at all? I'm seeing some. Some of you have, ha have lost animals. Sorry, my, my comments weren't moving, so I didn't see them. Let me see. Um, hi to everyone. Um, someone's asking about showing their horse in dressage. So I, that's not really what this, um, um, this is. I want to talk about um, soul agreements and soul contracts. Um, hey, much love from the North Pole. That's so cool. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just looking through to see if you guys have any questions. We've got Tucson. Leanne says this information is beautiful. Thank you. Well, you know, it's funny because someone wrote in and asked um, where my videos were on soul contracts and soul agreements. And I'm like, well, we don't have any. So, <laughs> so I thought I'd make one. Um, you know, that way everyone can get their, you know, get their information. So um, what do you guys most want to know about soul agreements or soul contracts? Anything at all? I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. So as I mentioned, they can be human to human, soul agreements, soul contracts. They can be human to animal. Um, they can sometimes be to learn hard things, you know, and they can sometimes be for beautiful things. And, you know, losing an animal companion is always a hard thing. But what I want to tell you is that when you really learn the work that I do and the work that I teach, you will absolutely find that when an animal crosses over, it's not quite as bad, it's not quite as painful, because you absolutely have a connection with their soul. You absolutely know their, um, you absolutely know that they're um, they're they're coming back or that they're with you. You you have uh, it, it's like it changes everything. I'm not saying it makes it happy a happy time or anything like that, but it sure takes away some of that gut wrenching pain. And that's one of my biggest goals in my work. So um, Wendy asks, "How is her angel dog?" And I just I'm going to share something to answer to uh, to everybody. When one of your animal companions makes their transition. I'm telling you they are 100% okay. The spirit realm, heaven, whatever you want to call it, is a place where beings want for nothing, where everything's wonderful. There's no, um, you know, struggle. There's no pain. It's like they've been renewed into a brand new body. And I know some of you have lost animal companions that were puppies or kittens or foals. And, um, we're, we're in brand new bodies already and for some reason they came back. That's something to explore a little bit deeper. You know, maybe they came back for a short time, I mean, and then they left. That's, that's gut-wrenching, of course, um, but there, there's always a reason and there's always a, a learning and a teaching for us. And some of our biggest um, ahas come from when we um, go through some pain in life. It's kind of sad. Um, and, and Lynn asks, can my former dog come through my new dog? And 100%, 100%, okay? Um, what happens is sometimes there's two souls, you know, and then one crosses or, or you just have one, you, let's say you have your dog in this case, Lynn, and your dog crosses over and then you get another dog. Well, that dog, by soul agreement, can make an agreement with your current dog to um, for your dog to kind of dog soul to step aside for a little bit and for your old dog to come through and connect with you and that happens a lot if we're not as good at connecting with them through this through spirit so if we're not from physical to spirit realm we're having a harder time connecting with them but it also can happen um, just to kind of show you you know just to be very clear and show you um, what exactly is going on you know so I want you to know that um, that 
that absolutely can happen. And all of a sudden, if one of your animals, one of your cats starts acting just like one that has crossed over recently, you can be sure that that cat is there with you. You know, I remember when I was, I went from an 80, 80 to 85 pound golden retriever Jigs who crossed over in 2007 to Carly, who I got, um, it's, it's interesting, she was born probably just over a month after Jigs crossed, but I didn't get her for um, quite a number of months because, because she was a toy dog. She stayed with a breeder for, with her, with her mom and with her family for four months at least. So um, anyways, I had read all these books on Maltese and they talked about Maltese, you know, not eating very much and maybe they'll eat three or four kibble and you have to watch for hypoglycemia and all these things. And here I was going, whoa, this is like so different because Jigs was like a food hound. Jigs would have eaten 10 meals if, you know, if let's say I forgot I fed him and I kept refeeding him, he would have kept re-eating it. And um, so I got, I read all these books on Maltese and I brought um, Carly home and the, the people who had her, she was from a rescue, she was born into a rescue. The people who had her told me they would cook chicken tenders and give them some chicken tenders. So I came home and I cooked some chicken tenders, I caught one up, I gave it to Carly and she wolfed it down and looked at me like, hey, I want more. So I gave her another one. And then she looked at me like, hey, I want more. So I found the people and I'm like, how many chicken tenders should I give her? You know, the book said they hardly eat at all, and she's eating like a horse. And they go, no, no, two's enough, after I told them, you know. That's more than enough. And it was like Jinx had come back and was vicariously living through Carly for a little bit. And and it's so funny, because Jinx has come through a few times to into other souls to help them eat. And I think that is just brilliant, because, um, you know, it, it's just... It, it, it was Jake's favorite thing in the world. So, of course, he's going to help others eat. So that's so that's so sweet. Um, you know, so and the other thing, the other really cute thing is I had like a little altar set up for Jake's and it was on this little um, shelf, that, this little cabinet thing that had three shelves and his ashes were there and a photograph of him was on the bottom shelf. And every night evening when I first got Carly she would go over to Jig's little altar and she would have an interaction a convert conversation kind of and she'd be like jumping around and you know doing her little barky kind of noises um, not very loud and actually interacting with Jig's it was it was really interesting it was, it was beautiful to see um, so Karen asks how long was my parakeet Orion supposed to be with me I think he passed too early so I want to say that you know Everything is in divine order. They, you know, absolutely, you know, I have a friend who was in rescue who helped me with Carly when she was little and um, just a wonderful, wonderful person. And she just passed um, this month. And absolutely in my mind, I would say it's way too early, way too young. Um, and on the other hand, I know that there's some reason for it. You know, maybe she's helping from the other side. It was like, you know, there, there's always a reason, no matter how how horrid it seems to us, you know, there always is. Um, that's, Lynn says, I thank you so much. I've noticed some similar behaviors. So Lynn, um, and felt like he was there with me. So, so Lynn's commenting on how her dog who's crossed over has come into her current dog. Lynn, if you don't mind, share a couple, a couple just a couple things that you noticed. And if there's anybody else on the line who has a question um, before we wrap, I'd be happy to answer it for you. And also, please share in the, you know, even after the, the live ends in this thread, please share how you have noticed um, anything to do with soul agreements, how you've noticed a past animal coming in through a new animal. Sometimes they're just wanting to show you that they're there, that they're still around, that they're still, you know, they're still riding you know, the waves of life with you. And sometimes they're preparing you for when they're coming back because they, like I said, many, many of them come back. Jake's decided that, you know, they, it was, wasn't his decision, but our soul agreements um, to, together with Jigs was that he would be there in this physical plane for that lifetime with me. And he would guide me and all my students in my animal energy certification training, along with Lucero, who I call an ascended master of the equine realm. Lucero is very much a, um, a, an amazing being that helps everybody in my trainings, as well as Jigs. So thank you guys so much for being here. If there's any other specific topics you hope I'll cover, 
um, please post them because I'm going to be doing some more lives and please post them in the comments and then at least I know I'm covering some topics that you guys really like and are useful for you. And if this is helpful for you, please share it with others that are of like mind or on your Facebook page or wherever you can share it. Um, the more that you guys share these videos, the more I can, um, I can do more for you. It helps me out. Thanks so much. Abundant blessings, everybody. See you next time.